to go over something that's very important okay so I'm gonna put this picture in front of you here and I just want to remind everybody about this metaphor that we've been talking about parent versus child okay so here's this picture this is the parent quadratic function so you got to think about it every single quadratic function all the quadratic equations written on this review and everything you'll ever encounter is a child of this parent so this picture needs to become part of your memory now these equations over here okay there are multiple ways to to talk about yourself like if you're the child your name might be uh, let's say Jonathan but you go by Jack okay but your your mom calls you um, sport okay um, so that like just like that there's different ways of referring to the parent and the child so the first way of referring to the to a quadratic equation is called the vertex form and this first line here is the general form and you know I understand that this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because there's no numbers and we can't really interpret it but it's it's important that you understand the form this isn't a formula it's a form y equals a open parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus k now the y and the X will always be there okay the only thing that's ever going to change is the a this minus sign could be a plus sign and then that H could is going to be a number and then this plus sign could be a minus sign and then this K is going to be a number so let's look at the parent quadratic function plugged into the, in the, written in this form, okay? So that would be y equals 1. Um, and we'll talk about what that means later. Open parentheses, x minus 0. So in this case, h is 0. Close parentheses, squared, plus 0 for k. And where am I getting that? The 0, 0. Well, the bottom of this hoop is right there, and we call that the vertex. And up until this moment, you have referred to this coordinate pair, x comma y. Well, now the x is called h, and the y is called k. But that's all it is. It's just a coordinate pair, okay? So that's way number one. Okay, and that's going to be the first part of the review. The second part of the review is going to give you this form, standard form. So this is kind of like another way of talking about a quadratic equation, the equivalent. These are the same, kind of like if, if somebody's got a nickname for you, but you've got your full legal name, same thing, right? Um, this is called standard form. And its general form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? Now, if you do enough of these problems, you'll memorize these general forms. But, you know, I understand you're just getting started. So here's what the general, uh, the general form is for this parent quadratic function. 1x squared plus 0x plus 0. Now, notice that these are multiplied, like 0 times x is 0 plus 0. If I cover that up, 
and I cover up the 1, then you just have y equals x squared. So this would be like really your, your nickname, like whatever. If it's Timothy, this is Tim. So nobody's going to write a quadratic equation out like that if, if it can be simplified to be just y equals x squared. So what you want to put in your calculator <clears throat> to start off with, let's turn it on. Okay. It's on the home screen, right? So you want to be on graph. And so just go down to B and hit enter or that. And now here you are on the scratch pad. Now, the next thing you need to do to start typing something is you need to hit tab. Now, one of two things is going to happen. If what you see is f of x, okay, like this, trying to get out of the glare, then you're good to go. You can type in x squared, okay, and then hit enter, okay? But let's say that that's not what you see. Let's say somebody's messed with the calculator and it says something like uh, rel, okay? You're going to need rel in a minute, but right now you don't. So to get out of that, if it says rel, you hit menu, okay, and then you're going to go down to where it says graph entry edit. You could just hit the number three. And then what you want is to choose function, right? Because we're going to enter a function. So now we got to type it again, right? I just deleted it. So what you want to do is you want to hit the X key and then squared. And you always want to have this Notice how this looks just like this, okay? You want to have the parent function there so you can compare what your, your child function is and see what's happened, right? This is how you're going to identify the transformations visually, okay? I'll show you how to identify them just by looking at the, the equations in a second. So now let's get into the review. We've done that prep. So let's look at number one. Now, number one says, give, all, the, all of these say, given the equation, list all of the transformations, okay? There's more instructions, but we're going to stop right there. List all of the transformations. So, for number one, I'm going to type in a second equation, okay? Uh, a second function. So, what I'm going to do, I'm trying to fit all this on, on one page, but also make it big enough that you can see it. Let me zoom out a little bit. So like for this one, we would hit um, tab, okay? And you're going to type a second function. And you're just going to type what you see here. So that you're going to hit the negative symbol, not the minus sign. And then in order to get a fraction, you're going to hit control division, okay? Control then division and you should get this fraction thing, okay? So now it says uh, one half, so we want to put in one over two, then move your arrow over, and then it says open parentheses x minus four squared plus two, and so you just type what you see, open parentheses x, don't use the negative symbol, use the minus sign, then four, it's already closed in parentheses. You can just hit the right arrow. And then to make it squared, you just hit this key right here. X squared, boom. Okay. And then it says plus 2. So you just want to do plus 2. Okay, and now hit enter. And it graphs the child function. Okay, and so you just want to identify what, what transformations took place. Well, it looks like a horizontal shift to the right by four units took place. One, two, three, four. Yep. It looked like it moves up two places. You see the little tick marks? One, two. And then it looks like it got fatter. Okay. And they call this compression, but I find that to be confusing since 
like the way we use the word compression in real life is to like make it smash together. So I like to say it's got fatter or it's stretched horizontally. So a horizontal stretch, that's what you want to write. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to write down all those movements. So here's our transformations, which I'll just abbreviate with TR, right? One, you would say there was a right shift by four units. Okay, there's many ways to say this. You could have also said a, a four unit horizontal translation to the right, or you could say it moved right four spaces, like just something to indicate that it moved to the right by four units. Then what happened? Okay, uh, we would say a vertical shift up, okay, because vertical could be up or down. You want to make sure you want to mention up by two units. Okay, and then uh, the one that seems to confuse people is like what happened here. Um, and then I realized I forgot one, like the most obvious transformation. We'll get to that in a second. And then there was a stretch. There was a horizontal stretch. You know, as they call it compression, but I just find that very confusing. Horizontal stretch makes the point really obvious. Horizontal stretch. Okay, and you don't need to indicate, I mean, you could indicate a horizontal stretch of, you know, one half, but that that part there at the end there, I don't care. I just want to see horizontal stretch. Um, or if you want to use compression by one half or whatever, okay? Um, now the fourth one, there was a fourth one that's super obvious and we just didn't talk about it. <clears throat> Okay, look at the blue, that's the parent, and then look at the red, that's the baby. So it flipped, right? It flipped. So we would say, the, you could say it flipped, but you need to say what axis did it flip over? Because if you say it flipped over the Y axis, that's not right, because that would mean that it went like this way. No, it went, it flipped down. So you will say, a horizontal flip over the x-axis or the more precise mathematical language would be reflection which just means flip reflection about or across the X axis. Okay? Now, what if I told you that all of that information was visible without touching the calculator? Okay? Um, look right here. You see this? If this is a minus sign, your brain is telling you X minus 4, oh, that means it moved left. But you got to think, you got to do the opposite of what your brain tells you. Okay, so if it says x minus 4, that means it moved to the right 4 units. So you can just read it. Like, you don't need to punch it in the calculator. If you want to, that's fine. That's great, and you should. But I'm saying you don't have to. And then plus 2, that's where that's coming from. Vertical shift by 2, there it is right there in black and white. Horizontal stretch of 1 half, boom, coming from right here. And then where did you find, like, how would you know from just looking at the equation that there was a, a reflection across the x-axis? And that's coming from that negative symbol right there. So the, if it says a negative, 
there's definitely going to be a, a, a reflection across the x-axis, all right? So as we go forward, we don't need to go type it all into the calculator. You can if you want, and that's super easy, and I encourage you to do so, but you don't have to. So that was the first part. Identify all the transformations. We just did. Okay. Then it says find the AOS. AOS stands for axis of symmetry. Now I want you to look at me, okay? I have an axis of symmetry cutting vertically down my body. Got two eyes, two ears, right? There's facial symmetry. I got two hands, right? Two feet. There's, I have this symmetry line going straight down. Well, so does, so does the quadratics. Look at the picture. See this picture? It's got an axis of symmetry, which happens to be the y-axis for the parent function, right? So this axis of symmetry would be, if I write down here, axis of symmetry, AOS, you have to write it as an equation, okay? So you'll write x equals zero. Now where did the zero come from? That's a good question. The zero came from right here. That's where I'm getting it. Okay? So, what I'll do it on the calculator now. I'm spending a lot of time on number one because the rest of these will go super fast if you understand what is going on. So, let's turn on the calculator now. Now we're going to use that rel thing. Okay? Relation. So, we want to find the axis of symmetry for the red child, okay? So hit tab, and now it's under f of x, but you need to type x equals. You can't do that when it says f of x. So what you have to do is hit menu, okay, menu, and then this thing comes up, and you want to go down to graph entry edit, and then go down and hit relation okay and now you can type in literally x equals and then look and type in that number right there whatever that number is okay now that's all of this everything I just said only applies if this symbol right here is a minus sign Okay, we'll get to what happens if it's a plus sign, but right now it's a minus sign, so you just type x equals 4. Okay, and let's see if we were right, because it should cut that red graph vertically in half. Ready? Enter. Okay. You see? So, and it even tells you that's the equation. See? You have to actually write this equation. You can't just write axis of symmetry 4. AOS equals 4. That's not true. AOS colon x equals 4. x equals 4 is an equation for a vertical line. So we're going to go back here. And then we're going to write here. Okay. We're going to write AOS colon yeah because we're not writing equals then we're going to write x equals four now what do they want they want the vertex okay well look at the uh, picture here you can find the vertex by just going and looking at it and see oh it's there right there at the top of the little hill yeah but there's no numbers so what do you do you go back to the, the equation. If this is a minus sign, this is dead simple. Okay? Your vertex is just that number, comma, that number with its sign. Okay? So in this case, this is going to be H, comma, K. That's the vertex. Okay? So in, in this specific example, that's going to be 4, 2. But in further future examples, that might be a minus, so you want to make sure to grab that sign. 
okay? And just make sure that you check yourself, like four comma two, is that right? Does that make sense? That's in quadrant one. Is the top of the hill in quadrant one? Yep. So if it makes sense, you probably did it right, you know? If you need help, come to me and I'll try to guide you. So the vertex is located at, you can just read it right here, four comma two. Now what do they want? Domain, range, and determine if it's a max or a min. Well, the easiest thing is to determine max or min. Just look at the picture, okay? Am I looking at the top of the hill or the bottom of a valley? For this child right here, okay? Pardon the interruption. Okay, so I'm at the top of a hill, right? So for the parent function, I'm at the bottom of the hill, but I'm looking at the red one. I'm at the top of the hill, so that's a max. So, we'll, you know, down here we'll, we'll write max. Okay. Now, but they want, uh, before, we, before we get to max, they want the domain and the range. Now, the domain is just the same for every single one of these. Unless you've given, been given some weird information that's weird and like you want to come to me and say, I don't understand, they're giving me some extra data here, I'm not sure what to do with this. The domain of all quadratic functions is all real numbers, okay, for every single one of them. Okay, so for your domain for this problem and for all of them you're going to write domain colon and then you can write all and here's a cool shorthand make your life easier you can put this symbol see that symbol refers to the set of all real numbers so all and then this weird looking R you can also write all real numbers or if you want to write it in the inequality notation, which is get confusing, that would be negative infinity, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to positive infinity, okay? <laughs> There's even another way to write it that I'll just show, share with you. That would be negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, right? These are all equivalent ways of saying all real numbers. Now the same is not true for the range, but the range is not hard. Okay, The range just requires a little bit more an, uh, analytical prowess. Is it not that difficult? So the better way, the thing to do with the range is just look. Am I looking at the top here? Yes, that's the top. So there, it, 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 it has a top beyond which it cannot go, okay? And the top is that number right there, okay? In this case, it's two. So what's the bottom? You look back here at this. This thing goes down forever, forever, forever in all eternity. So the range is negative infinity, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to that number, whatever that number is, okay? Include the sign. So, you know, you can just write two in this case. All right, well, that is number one. Good job. All right, so here we are on number two. So we kind of have our bearings and we understand, you know, basically what's up. So let's ask ourselves, We're going to go through this list here, okay? First it says list all the transformations, okay? Well, we can do that without even looking at a graph. So just, just look at it for a minute. So um, first let's do the easy ones, the ones that we, you know, that you definitely know. 
is this a minus sign? Yes, that means that it's movement to the right um, by three units. So if I'm going to list my transformations, I might start by saying TR colon, and then I might type or write one, and then I will say uh, horizontal shift right R I G H T okay by th by three units you know And the, the question is always um, horizontal shift to the right by three units from what exactly? Well, from this, from the parent function, okay? So then what? What else happened from the parent function? Um, we have a movement down by three units. So we can say a vertical translation just to use another word, vertical uh, translation down by three units. So see, I'm kind of writing off the page. Let me zoom out just a bit. Okay. Is that it? What about the stretch? Was there a stretch? Yes. Okay, so there's a stretch. Now, how do you know it's a how do you know whether it's a horizontal stretch, you know, or whether it gets it's squeezed? Okay, and here's how you know. Is this a fraction? with a smaller number in the numerator than in the denominator. In other words, is it a proper um, fraction? And if it's a proper fraction, the numerator will be smaller than the denominator. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, like it is in this case, that means that it got pulled wider, okay? So we would call that, instead of using the compression language, I prefer a horizontal stretch. To me that makes more sense. A horizontal stretch. Um, you know, and you could say something like, if you wanted to include the number, you would say something like, of magnitude you don't have to include this uh, of magnitude one-third okay did it flip okay the question is did it flip well is there a negative sign here remember the um, see the original equation has a one so if, uh, and, and that one's facing up. So if it's minus, it's facing down. So you would say, yeah, there's a, a flip, or you would say a reflection. Across the x axis. Okay. Reflection across the x-axis. Okay. Did anything else happen? No. That's it. So now we want to do the axis of symmetry. A, 
O, S. The axis of symmetry is just that number right there. <clears throat> so this is H. So this is the um, X coordinate of the vertex. And the axis of symmetry is an equation. Uh, in this case, it's X equals H, which in this case means X equals 3. And that, the reason we can write that is because that's a minus sign. If that was a plus sign, you would have to change that to a negative 3. Okay? So just like that's H, that's the X coordinate of the vertex. This is K, the Y coordinate of the vertex. And that includes the sign. Okay? Because now it's going to ask you what the vertex is. <laughs> okay? That's just kind of prepping you for it. So where is the vertex? Look how we're doing all of this without touching a calculator or needing to do any math. It's just reading, you're reading the equation. Where's the vertex? To, if that's a minus sign, you don't have to do anything except write h comma k. Okay? Well, the vertex is located at h comma k. Well, h is, is 3 and k is negative 3. So you can make your fancy symbol. Therefore, um, you could say 3 comma negative 3. So where's the vertex? Is it in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4? Where is x positive and y is negative? That would be in quadrant 4, right? Q4. I mean, you can include that. This would be quadrant IV, right, for 4. Um, domain. The domain is the same for all of these quadratics, unless you're given other information to indicate that something is else is going on. So in this case the domain is all real numbers. And I thought um, I would show you another way of writing it. Uh, like in question one I showed you three ways of writing it. There's, there's even more ways of writing it. Uh, you could use something called set builder notation. So you could say the set of all X, okay, in the element as where X is an element of the real number group, okay, and you draw this bar, okay, where X is um, negative infinity comma positive infinity. Okay, uh, there might be some technical not technically correct way to write that, but that's just another way of saying all real numbers, right? You're trying to tell us that X can be any number. Now the range is different. So the range requires you to kind of first answer the question that comes after it, which is, is this a minimum or a maximum? Well, ask yourself this question. Is this thing pointing up or down? Is it making this shape or is it making this shape? And because it's... Okay, so the range... Now, we were discussing whether or not this thing 
does this or this, right? And it's all about that symbol right there. So that's a negative sign. That means that this thing points down. It's a upside down U, right? So it's going down forever and it's like a mountain with a peak. So I think it's better to, before we write the range, we write that this is a maximum, okay? Max, you see? So now you know that your range is going to begin at negative infinity and end at the top of the hill, right? And the question is, where's the top of the hill? And that's what's so nice about this vertex form, because that right number, or that number, <laughs> that, that right number, that number right there, K, with its sign, is the top of the hill, okay? That's the Y value of the vertex. And the vertex, in this case, is a maximum. So the highest point this gets to is negative three, okay? So what we write is, down here in range, is we say, well, what's the lowest number? And this is hard for students to understand sometimes, but the lowest number is actually negative infinity. Okay? And I prefer for range to use inequality notation. Um, so we write negative infinity less than or equal to, remember, range is y. So y uh, less than or equal to what number? Negative 3. Okay? So we put a negative 3 right here. And then we already answered the question, is it a maximum or a minimum, right? So if you have a positive number here, you're always dealing with a minimum because it's going to be a U, a hoop, okay? If it's a negative number, it's been flipped and reflected, right? So it's going to be a maximum. I want you to do a few of these. It's just not that hard. But this is number two. Good job. All right, so here we are on number three. Now we're starting to get to be experts at this. Now what's going to help you a whole lot on number three is if you take a pencil or a pen and in front here you put a one. Because then you'll know what your A value is, right? Um, if we refer back to the standard vertex form, that A value determines everything about the graph, right? Is it upward sloping or downward sloping? You know, is it is it this way or is it this way? If it's a positive number, it means it's this. If it's a negative number, it means it's this. If that number is anything other than one, then some kind of stretch, compression, pull, pu push, squeeze, you know, has occurred. If it's one, look, this is the parent. So it's going to be no stretch. In other words, the shape won't change at all. It's just going to be moved horizontally and vertically. Okay? So we're in luck. Because on this one, the A value is 1, which means that uh, there's, there's other transformations that have occurred to this child function. We think about it parent child okay um, but one of the but the but no horizontal stretch no vertical stretch no squeeze no compression none of this okay so we can just free our minds of, of that issue the other good news is that this is a minus sign which means that we can simply interpret this three as the X value of the vertex. In other words, h comma k is going to be 3 comma 4. 
and that means that the in this case the lowest point on the graph is at 3 comma 4 okay so we want to identify these points H look at we even got in luck here because that's a positive uh, 4 so this is K okay I see that my um, camera froze my let me try to fix that for a second okay so that that should be working now so now everything's cool right so now we're just gonna write the transformations TR for transformation one okay um, we have a horizontal translation to the right by three units to the right of, of what to the right of the origin right so from the origin you have a, a hoop right the parent quadratic function it moves over three spaces and then it goes up four spaces so this whole thing it doesn't change its shape. Nothing happens. It just, you just pick it up, move it over three, up four, right? So it's sitting in Q1 up here, okay? So one, I want to say a horizontal translation. Um, and then you want to tell it what direction, right? How many units? Three. Okay. And uh, you could have said horizontal shift. You could have said it moved to the right, three units, whatever. Okay. Two. We have a vertical translation up four units. So we'll use the shift language this time. We'll just say shift up four units. And that's it for, for transformations. Nothing else happened, okay? So we move on to axis of symmetry. A, O, S. Remember, if this is a minus sign right here, which it is, then the A, O, S is just X equals H. So it's just X equals H, where H is... 3. Therefore, I'll move my hand so you can see. See what I'm doing? So therefore, the AOS equation, right? Because that's really what it is. It's not a number. It's an equation. Is x equals 3. Bingo. Okay. Now we do vertex. Okay. The vertex we already decided is three comma four. Okay. Vertex. It is located at H comma K. You know, I'm going to write this out where H equals 3 and K equals 4 therefore okay vertex is at 3 comma 4 and I'm going to jump now to the bottom here because that's 
we're going to state that that's a minimum, right? Because we know that the because it's an upward sloping quadratic function, the vertex located at the bottom of the valley. So it's a minimum. So we want to write min. Next up, they want the domain. And I would just say x. Um, and here's the symbol for is an element of the set of. Okay, that's that's not an e. You see how I've written it kind of weird. It's like a a u turned on its side with a little line. So that means is in the set of or is an element of, and then you write the symbol for real numbers. So x is in the set of real numbers. Um, and you can say something like and is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I've just, I keep writing this different ways, like trying to show you that there's just a lot of ways to write all real numbers. That's all this says. X is an element of the real number set, and it's defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. Could we have written all real numbers and just been done with it? Yeah. So now range. Okay, remember, hoop, okay? So the lowest number is going to be k, the y value of the vertex, the bottom of the hoop, the bottom of the valley. And so if you look at your equation, k is four. So the lowest number, we always start our inequality notation for range with the lowest number, you write 4 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to positive infinity because it goes up forever. Range is one of the harder concepts to master. Um, I've just noticed that five years. Students always struggle with it. I struggled with it. And I still struggle with it. So don't feel bad if you don't you know, understand. Uh, but it looks like we answered all the questions that they wanted uh, for this problem. And so that is the end of number three. Great job. Okay, folks, here we are with number four. And um, I'm going to just section this off a little bit so we know where number four is. Take a look at the situation. Do we have a positive a value? Mm -hmm. But it's different than one. It's bigger. So it's not a fraction. So it's that's not a horizontal stretch, the uh, compression or whatever they call it, right? It's it means that it's been squeezed and pulled like this. Okay? So it got narrower is what it means. Um, about it is the slope got steeper. All right. Okay, so compared to the parent function, where the consider this like the slope is one, in this uh, child function, the slope is two. And so it, it got squeezed and stretched the slope got steeper, so it's going to be a narrower. So instead of uh, this, it's more squeezed like this. And so um, just remember that there's going to be a, um, 
a, a, like a vertical stretch is what I call it. Now, good news is that's a minus sign, so we don't we can just accept that one as the h value. And k is positive four, so h comma k. We already know the vertex one comma four. So this is going to be in Q1, quadrant 1, top left, uh, top right of the uh, coordinate plane. It's going to be a U shape, okay? So it's going to have a minimum, and it's going to, its lowest point is going to be 4, and its highest point is going to be infinity. So there's your range. Domain's all real numbers. There's a right shift of one unit and a vertical shift up of four units. Uh, the axis of symmetry is x equals one. So the domain's all real numbers. I think I already said that. We've, we've already hit all the points. Like So let's just write it out. Here's our transformations. Um, first, we'll start with um, vertical stretch. Okay. Um, you can say something like steeper slope. Or you can call it a squeeze. Okay. Like all of these are um, different ways of saying the same thing. All right. So next up, we've got horizontal movement to the right of one unit. So let's use, find some new language. Um, we've already used shift, right shift, uh, horizontal translation. What else can we say? We could say moved, uh, moves, right, one unit. Yeah, no problem. How about three? Vertical movement. Moves up four units. Okay. And that's it for transformations. Now we're on to axis of symmetry. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce a new symbol to you. Okay, and that's the since symbol. So since, S-I-N-C-E, since. And the symbol that goes for since is, is this symbol here. I'm going to put in parentheses. It's like therefore, but it's upside down. Okay. Since, this symbol also means because. Like because or since. Since um, the axis of symmetry is, we'll say, defined as x equals h and h equals 1, the axis of symmetry colon x equals 1. In other words, the vertical line that would cut the graph in half, like splitting me vertically down the middle, symmetrical on either side of me, would be at x equals 1. Okay? Now we want the vertex. Well, the vertex is just h comma k, so we can say 
the vertex is h comma k and h equals 1 and k equals 4 therefore okay vertex and I can even use the at the vertex is at where 1 comma 4 1 comma 4 okay now we're on to domain and range so domain will make it easy this time all real numbers okay I'm tempted to expand on that, but I won't. The uh, range. Now remember, the range is going to be, uh, because this is a minimum, because it's a minimum, the range is going to be the y value at the bottom of the at the bottom of the valley at the lowest point in the valley so you just check that y value which is k so you say well the range is going to be k less than or equal to y less than or equal to infinity where k is 4. Right? It's another way of saying 4 less than or equal to y less than or equal to infinity. And you've answered all the questions for number four. Good job. Okay, so now we're moving on to a new section where things are written in standard form. Now if we go back and look at our parent graph, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, there's a few things to note about standard form. C is the y-intercept. Okay, let's make a note here. In standard form, so you get something with standard form that you don't get with vertex form just like you get something with vertex form that you don't get with standard form. And you can convert between the two. Um, we haven't shown you how to do that yet, but it's pretty easy. So in standard form, C is the y int. Okay. In standard form, C is the y-intercept. So that's useful, because if we know what that is, that's going to help us, all right? We'll show you how it, it helps us here on number five. So we can't just throw all that analysis out about, uh, like, what transformations took place. Um, we have to go about it a different way. The very first thing you do when you see an equation in standard form is you identify a, b, and c. a equals b 
equals C equals. Okay. And uh, you just read the numbers off, right? So this right here is A. This number with its sign is B. And this number with its sign is C. It's that simple, okay? So A equals 2. B equals negative 8. And C equals 6. Okay, now from this right away, I'm going to be able to determine two things. So we're going to go about this in a different order. There's a formula for the axis of symmetry. So we'll put that in our notes. So in standard form, so I'm just going to put, you know, like this means this in standard form, negative B over 2A is the x coordinate of the vertex. And the axis of symmetry. So you get both. You get the x coordinate of the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right. So like I I think we should first we should identify um, the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry in this case is going to be equal to negative b over 2a where Okay, B is negative 8, and A is 2. So we can plug this in now, but you need to be very careful because watch how this negative sign is going to stay there even though b is negative 8. So you're going to have negative, negative 8. So we move on. We keep going. So we write negative, negative 8 over 2. And then a happens to also be 2. So 2 times 2. So what does that equal? Remember what we're finding here. We're, we're finding the x value of the vertex and the axis of symmetry at the same time. So that's going to be negative. Negative makes a positive. So I've got 8 over 2 times 2 is 4, which I can reduce. 8 divided by 4 is 2 equals Two. Okay, so what do we know? So the axis of symmetry equation is x equals 2. We also know the x value x val, I'll call it, of the vertex is 2. 
Okay. So what does that mean we know? Well, the x value of the vertex is h. So we also know that h is 2. All right? We know all of that just from this formula. That's pretty powerful. So how do we find the y value of the vertex if we know the x value of the vertex. Uh, well, what we could do, and this is what you have to do, is you have to evaluate your equation where x is 2. Okay? Because what you're doing is, you know, in a function, it's a one to one matching, right? The, so um, if I plug in, 2 for x and just wherever where there's an x I put a 2 and I run the numbers it's going to give me y equals some number and that number will be the y value of the vertex this is a little bit more complex than working with vertex form right but you can do it so I prefer to, to work with this in function notation you can always just switch back and forth between y and function notation so I'm like going to write f of 2 equals, so look at the equation. So we write the 2 and then open parentheses and then what you want to do is you want to put this 2 here, okay? See this 2 everywhere? This 2 goes in here where there is an x and then that's squared. Okay, and then we have negative eight times x, which is two, plus six. And you really don't need a calculator for this. This is not that complicated math, right? Remember PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So Start with the parentheses and the exponents here. What's 2 squared? 2 times 2 is 4. So we're going to do it each step. So I've got 2 times 4. And now think about this. What is negative 8 times 2? That's going to be negative 16. Minus 16 plus 6. Now let's, we're going to run out of space if I don't move horizontally, so I'm going to say, well, what does that equal? That, we keep going. Um, 2 times 4 is 8, so I'm going to write 8 minus 16 plus 6. And what does that equal? Right. Well, now we're just combining a bunch of numbers together. Like we're getting real close to finding out what y is, the y value of the vertex. So, eight minus sixteen. Think about what's going on. That's going to put you at negative eight. Right. So now you've got negative eight plus six. So where do you end up? You end up with negative two. So now you know the y value of the vertex. Okay? So the y value of the vertex, so the y val or k of the vertex is -2. So now we can now we know where the vertex is. Okay, now that's going to allow us to backtrack into our transformation. Okay, so um, we can state the vertex. We already stated the axis of symmetry right here.
Okay. Now, how about the vertex? We got vertex. Located at H comma K, right? Well, where H is two and K is negative two. Therefore, your vertex is located at two comma negative two. Now, you got to think about this for a minute. Where is that? Where is x positive and y negative? Quadrant 4. Okay. So that puts us in Q4. So I'm just going to make a note above this. That's quadrant 4. So you think about in your mind, that's the bottom right of the Cartesian plane. Yeah? If you were thinking about a graph, it goes counterclockwise, right? One, two, three, four. We're down in this area here. Two comma negative two. Now is that the bottom of a hoop or is that the top of a hill? Okay. Well, that's where A comes in. So A is still A. Just like up here, A, 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 okay? So that's a positive number, and that means that, uh, and it's bigger than one, so that means that there is a, a vertical um, compression or squeeze and pull, a stretch, a vertical stretch, a vertical pull, a squeeze, whatever you want to call it. It got narrower, it got steeper, okay? Um, and then you got to think in your mind, so you, you can construct the, the, the movement in your mind. So you, you, you think about it like this. You start here at zero comma zero, and you end up at two comma negative two, right? One, two, one, two. So what happened? There was a, a, a vertical stretch, okay, or a, a squeeze, and then there was a movement to the right of two units and a movement down of two units, okay? So we can put somewhere in here that this is a minimum. Okay, we'll box that up since we're kind of tight for space here. We're going to box this up so we know that the vertex is here. So we're slowly building this, but you kind of do it backwards, right? So um, now we can say, well, all right, transformations. What happened? There was a squeeze. slash vertical stretch. I'll write vert stret. I just I guess I'll write the whole word vert stretch. Um, what else happened? There was a, a, a right shift of two and a downshift of two. Okay? Now these are, these are little, you know, when you're working with standard form, you kind of have two options. You can either uh, work it the way I worked it just now, or you can convert it into um, vertex form, okay? But to convert it into vertex form requires us to 
uh, know more than we know, okay? Uh, to convert vertex to standard form doesn't require us to know more than we know, but to convert from standard to vertex requires us to know something called completing the square, which we haven't learned yet. And so, you know, doing this kind of analysis is actually, um, that's pretty straightforward, honestly. Uh, is it more intense? Sure. But you can do it, right? You can do it. Um, do we answer all the questions? Uh, domain and range. Okay. So, you know, I really like the fact that I'm having to work this on the same paper as you guys because I don't have any room. <laughs> so, we're going to go sideways here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my teacher knows that I'm still working on this question, right? Uh, let me delineate some space here. Um, oops, I delineated. Okay. I don't have my, uh, I need to erase that one. It doesn't matter. So, so we're still, I just maybe even make a point, we're still on number five, right? Just make, make sure that that's clear to your, your teacher. We're still dealing with number five. What's the domain? No, nothing changed here. Domain's all real numbers. And I would, you know, for me, when you start to get doing a lot of these, I just write the, the R symbol. It's all real numbers, okay? Uh, range well the range is going to be uh, the lowest point because this is an upward facing graph because of that two right there um, we know that we're dealing with the bottom of a of a valley so it's a it's a minimum okay we already wrote that right here, minimum. So the minimum range is going to be k. What's k? k is negative 2. So the range is negative 2, comma, infinity. And that right there, um, we need to make sure that this is uh, a bracket and not a parenthesis. I'm using a different type of notation called interval notation. Um, sorry, can't I see it? That's a bracket. Okay, a square bracket. That means that the range includes that number. And when you use this notation, which is called interval notation, you always terminate with infinity you terminate with a parenthesis, meaning that it doesn't include the end of infinity. It's more of like a, there is no, in, there's no stopping point of infinity. So you, if you put a square bracket at the end of infinity, you're saying that infinity is not infinite. If that makes any sense. So what else do we miss? Um, we did all, we didn't, we did the list of transformations. We found the axis of symmetry, the vertex, the domain, the range, and we determined if it's max or min. We did everything. I want to tell you something. We have enough information right now to actually write this thing in vertex form, um, but we already found everything we need, so um, we will just leave it at that. Now we're going to section off some space to work on number six that makes it really clear to our teacher that we're working on number six because we've kind of bled over into the occupancy space of number six when we get to number six so i'm just going to finish this by kind of uh, just um, modifying uh, all this to make sure that it is super clear um, 
what's going on, right, visually for the teacher. This is a mess, you know, it's uh, not enough space on the page. Look at the full view here, okay? So, yeah, we're going to do number six next, but uh, maybe now we know for number five we should have uh, indented, pushed, we should have pushed it over here to begin because we kind of wrote a little bit too far to the right. And that's okay. I mean, the point is, took up as much space as it took up. Um, yeah. So good job. We finished number five. Okay. Well, let's uh, take a look here at number six. Okay. So right away looking at this equation, um, what, what can we say about it? Compared to the parent function, of course. Okay, so there's the parent function. There's the parent function standard form. Like no one writes it this way, right? But I wrote it out so you could see. 1x squared plus 0x plus 0. Its vertex is located at the origin. And it slopes upward like this. Okay, you could... Think of the a value kind of like slope. It isn't really like slope um, <clears throat> in the linear equation sense, you know, rise over run. But it's a good, I'm going to use a word here, heuristic. Uh, heuristic means like it's a good way of thinking about it, like slope. So the bigger the number is, the steeper or the narrower the curve gets. So if you have like a fraction, so let's say that let's say that the parent function is like this. All right, it, if it's a fractional uh, a value, then it, it it's like the, it widens. Okay. If it's a negative value, it's gonna point like this. Okay. If it's a positive whole number, but that it's greater than one, then instead of being the normal uh, it's the normal <clears throat> the normal picture okay with the, you could think about like a slope of one right it's going to get narrower and narrower and narrower until it's almost like this okay so if, if the leading coefficient there and that a value was like a 20 then it would be like this it's almost <clears throat> perfectly be almost smashed together. That's why we call it a squeeze or a vertical stretch. Okay. So looking here at, at, at this one, it says two. Well, okay, so that's bigger than one. So that means we're going to see a squeeze, right? It's not going to be this. It's going to be like this, you know. It's still pointing up, so that means it has a minimum. It's a valley, okay, not a mountain, all right? We also have negative 2 at the end, and that means that the y-intercept is located at 0, comma negative 2. The graph of this crosses the y-axis at 0, comma negative 2. Okay, so we, we're going to follow our steps. <clears throat> we identify A, B, and C. So I'm going to write that general form again underneath here, A, X squared, plus bx plus c. Okay? So we'll put y equals. So now you can just map, right? You can just say, okay, a is 2, b is negative 4, c is negative 2. We're going to write that down. a equals, b equals, c equals. We always do this because this is one way we avoid making silly mistakes. So a is 2, b is negative 4, and c is negative 2. All right, so what's the first thing that we did the last time? Well, the first thing we did the last time was find the axis of symmetry 
which also gave us the x-coordinate of the vertex because the axis of symmetry cuts right through, right? It cuts right down the middle and it's that, that means it's going to cut right through the vertex so the x value, the axis of symmetry and the x value of the vertex are one and the same. Okay, so let's find that. Here, we're going to write AOS for axis of symmetry slash x val of the vertex, right? I'll just write x val vert so you understand, which is also h. Remember, the vertex is h comma k. So all of this is going to be accomplished with this one simple equation. And here's that equation. The equation is negative b over 2a. So now we plug it in. All right. This equals negative and then open parentheses, negative 4. Close parentheses, over 2, open parentheses, and then what's A? 2. Okay. This is almost identical to the one we just did. Um, so let's see what that equals. Right, so we've got a double negative on top, so we're going to write just 4, since negative negative 4 is just 4. <clears throat> we have 4 over 2, oh, sorry, 4 over 4, 2 times 2 is 4. So guess what? That equals 1. So what does that mean? Okay, here's what that means. <clears throat> that means that h is 1. Okay, so let's get that down. It's important. And the axis of symmetry equation okay, is x equals 1, which is just a vertical line. x equals 1 is a vertical line passing through 1 on the x-axis. So now it's time to find um, the, y, the y value of the vertex, or k, right? So how do we do that? Well, we know the x value of the vertex, so we just evaluate 2x squared minus 4x minus 2 at 1. Okay, that's why I use the function notation. So we're going to do f of 1 equals 2, open parentheses, 1, close parentheses, squared, minus 4, open parentheses, 1, close parentheses, minus 2. Okay. Remember, 1 squared is what we do first. So 1 times 1 is 1. So that's just 1. And then 1 times 2 is 2. So when we go to the next step, we're going to write 2. And then 4 times negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So we just write 2 minus 4 minus 2. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So this just becomes negative 4. Okay, what does that mean? That means that k is negative 4. Okay, k is negative 4. Now we got the vertex. Now, 
the vertex is 1 comma negative 4. What quadrant is that in? Let's see. It's where x is positive and y is negative. Quadrant 4. Yeah? So we know that this thing, this, uh, the bottom of this hoop is in quadrant 4, q4. So that gives you a kind of picture of what's going on. Okay, so what else do we need here? We found the axis of symmetry. We should probably put that in a box. Um, and we found the vertex. Let's go ahead and write that out. So vertex H comma K is, and then in parentheses we'll write one comma negative four. Okay. All right, well that was big. We got that done. What else do we need? Uh, we can write down that this is a minimum. So min. All right, what else do we need? And we're almost done, right? This transformations, right? So we got a list of transformations. TR. Okay, so what's the first transformation? Uh, let's look at the two. The leading coefficient, A, is 2. So that represents a squeeze. Okay, so we can write 1. Squeeze. slash vertical, and I'll just abbreviate vert, stretch. Okay, slash, you know, pull, right? You can think about all the different words that you could use to describe what is happening, right? <clears throat> what else happened? It moved, didn't it? I mean, it starts at, the parent function starts out at 0, 0, and this thing ends up at 1, negative 4. So that means that there was a horizontal movement to the right of 1, and then a downward movement of 4. So we can say horizontal shift. of 1 to the right and then finally a downshift let's use down translation right let's use a big fancy word down translation four units okay I mean, is that all? What else? Oh, domain and range. Can't forget that. Okay, so domain is easy. All real numbers, right? So let's do it in inequality notation this time. Negative infinity, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to positive infinity. Just another way of saying all real numbers. You see, we keep coming up with like 5,000 ways to say the same thing. Okay, how about range? Well, the range is very simple because it's the bottom of the hoop, right? So we're looking at the minimum. The protractor is really good, isn't it? We're looking for the bottom of the hoop here. Um, so the bottom of the hoop is going to be the y value of the vertex, which is k. So the range is k, <clears throat> we'll put the number in a second, but just so you get the idea, k less than or equal to y less than or equal to infinity. What's k? k is negative 4, so that's negative 4 
less than or equal to y, less than or equal to infinity. And that's the end of uh, number six, I think, right? We did it all. Vertex, domain, range, max, min, transformations, axis of symmetry. It's all there. Right there. Okay? And um, we didn't need a calculator. I mean, you could have used one, but did you need one? Like, I don't... All of these are little numbers, you know? And actually making your brain, pushing your brain to do this... Look, if you need a calculator, I want you to use one. So by all means, okay? But, you know, what are the chances that you're going to have this device with you at the when you need it, right? <clears throat> if you're in college and they tell you no calculator allowed, what are you going to do? Right? So I want to equip you. You're you're free to use calculator, right, on the test. That's fine. But, you know, I want to equip you with the knowledge of how would you do it if you didn't have a calculator? Well, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, going all the way back to the ancient Babylonians, like we're talking, guys, 8,000 years of human history, people have been solving quadratic equations without a machine. And you can do it too. Um, if you need a machine, I have no problem. Zero. No, nothing. But... There's going to come a point, if you go pursue your education further, where you will be deprived the machine by order of your teacher in a, in a higher education capacity. Nobody cares. You know, we, you complain about it, they don't care. I mean, that's college. Um, and, and if you're a junior or senior, you got to be prepared. The teachers have no mercy. None. Believe me, I've been there. I'm I'm in that I'm in a, a, a graduate program right now myself, and so um, for a PhD. And I'll tell you right now, the teachers just have absolutely they don't care at all. It's uh, you're you're supposed to be a, a grown up by then, and they just don't care. So you know, I'll tell you right now, none of my math teachers ever let me use a calculator for anything. Um, so ju I'm just trying to tell you that I'm trying to, I'm not trying to keep you from your machine I'm just telling you that what is it a year two years from now you're gonna be in college and they're gonna tell you no machine and then you're gonna be uh, like oh what what do I do okay so that's why I'm showing you this way okay well that's enough that's the end of number six all right here we are on number seven okay so this one has a negative X squared so we should probably help ourselves out by putting a little one in there. Just so we know that it's negative one. You know, a is negative one. Let's go ahead and write that <clears throat> that um, standard form beneath it. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? Don't worry if you know you don't have to commit it to memory. If you write it down enough, your brain will remember it without you even trying. So that's why I write it down every time, <clears throat> so I don't forget it. You know, you hear the phrase, "If you don't use it, you lose it." Um, that holds very true, even for me. Uh, so I just want to reach out and say, I'm not gifted at math at all. I just teach it all day. So it seems like I'm an expert, but that's just because I'm sitting here doing it all day long. If you were sitting here doing math all day, every day, if this was your job description, <laughs> you would you would be good at it, this too, right? But you put me in a calculus class or something where I'm, I haven't seen the material in a long time, I'll be lost just like you. So, you know, if you're lost or confused, this is the place to be because this is a tutorial and this is where you get help. And if you need extra help, just reach out via email, have your parents call me. I'll do a Zoom with you and show you one-on-one -on -one how to do this. Or we can do it in person, whatever. All right, so let's write down what A equals. A equals B equals C equals. 
So a is negative 1, b is 8, and c is negative 20. Okay? Remember, that's the y-intercept. 0, comma, negative 20. So this thing crosses the y-axis at negative 20. Um, so the slope, if you want to use this term, is negative 1. So that's good news for us. That means there's no compression, stretching, pulling, nothing. There's a flip, though, okay, because it's negative. I keep showing this picture, right? So, you know, if this is a 1 and the graph of it looks like this, if it's a negative 1, it's the same graph but just flipped over the x-axis, reflected, okay? So we'll get to the transformations in a second. Just remember that's what's going to happen. So this thing is a upside down U. This is a mountain. And so it's got a peak or a maximum, right? So we can get that down right away. This is a maximum. You can write down max. We'll put that in a box since that's something we need. And how about the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry, remember the same thing, that's going to be h. That's going to be the x value of the vertex. Since the axis of symmetry passes right through the vertex, and since the axis of symmetry is in the form of an equation that begins with x equals, then the axis of symmetry gives us h. So axis of symmetry comma or slash h slash x val vert, right? x val vertex. And all of that gets accomplished with this little formula. Negative b over 2a. Just amazing formula. Negative b over 2a. All right, so let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. This equals... Now, this time, b is positive, so we just write negative 8 over 2 times a, which is negative 1. So 2, open parentheses, negative 1, close parentheses. All right, so let's see where this takes us. This is going to give us negative 8 over negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so this whole thing goes to 4. Okay. So now we know two things. We know the axis of symmetry equation is x equals 4 and we know that h equals 4, okay? So we got two things here. We got the axis of symmetry and the h value of the vertex. Okay? So now, what, remember what we do? We plug in 4, since that's the... the h, which is the x value of the vertex, I said the h value of the vertex, x value, of the, these are interchangeable. So we just plug in 4 into this equation up here where the x's are, and we find out what the y value of the vertex is. So we assume it's a function, we write f of 4, okay, equals negative 1, open parentheses 4, close parentheses squared, plus 8, open parentheses 4, close parentheses, minus 20. All right, remember, we first we square. So 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. So this equals 
negative 16. And then 8 times 4 is 32, and that's positive 30 plus 32. So where are we at now? Negative 16 plus 32, that's positive 16, because 16 times 2 is 32. So right now in my head, I'm thinking, okay, right now I'm at positive 16. What happens next? I subtract 20. So now I'm at positive 16 minus 20. Where am I at? Take 20 from 16. Right? Go by 10s. It makes it easier. You got 16 minus 10. That's 6 minus 10. Negative 6. Is that right? Let's do it this way. You got... 32 minus 20. What is that? 32 minus 20 is 12. What's 12 minus 16? 12 minus 16. Uh, we take 12. So that's like 16 minus 12, right? Oh, so it's negative 4. Ah, okay. So... Maybe the head game isn't the right game. <laughs> so 32 minus 16 gives me 16 minus 20. I'm just confusing myself. So let's try this. Let's do it another way. Let's make sure we're right. Uh, let's do the negative. So negative 16 plus negative 20 would be negative 36. So then you got negative 36 plus 32. The difference there is 4, but it's going to be negative. So, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's negative 4. This equals negative 4. Okay, I'm pretty confident about that. So, what does that mean? That means that k is negative 4. Put that in a box. And remember, k is the y value of the vertex. Therefore, is there a symbol for therefore? Vertex is located at 4, comma, negative 4. 4, comma, negative 4. Okay. By the way, if you wanted to check it, let's say you, you weren't sure, you, you know, this is, this is the old days. If you wanted to check this, you would perform a truth test by plugging in negative 4 for y and 4 for x and seeing if you got the two numbers be equal to one another. All right, so let's perform that truth test because, like, I, you know how I was messing up on the math in my head? Well, I want to make sure I'm right, you know? So let's do a truth test over here. It's like a little check. So we're going to replace this whole equation, y equals negative 1x squared plus 8x minus 20. We're going to replace the y with negative 4. And we're going to say negative 4 equals negative 1 times 4 squared plus 8 times 4 minus 20. All right, so that negative 4 stays there. Negative 4 equals... And then that 16 times negative 1 gives us negative 16 plus 32 minus 20. And, you know, we can play all kinds of games here. Like, um, I'll just show you. It doesn't matter. Like, uh, we can um, add 16 to both sides. Just show you, like, math is just infinitely mutable. Mutable, mutable means changeable. All right, so why not do that? Okay, so what do we get? What's negative 4 plus 16? So that's 16 minus 4. That's 12. So now I've got 12 equals 32 minus 20. 
All right. Well, now let me play another game. Let me add 20 to both sides. Okay. That cancels that out. 12 plus 20 is 32. So 32 equals 32. It checks out. Okay. So now I'm really, 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 really confident that our vertex is, in fact, um, what we think it is. 4, comma, negative 4. Okay. So there's the vertex. What else do we need? So we found max, we found axis of symmetry, we found vertex. We need domain, range, and transformations. So we'll do domain and range in a second. Let's do the transformations. Okay? Transformation one, we've got a flip, okay? Okay, a flip, or let's use the word reflection across the y-axis. You might say flip down, flipped over, flip down. But this is a reflection across the x-axis. Okay? What else happened? Well, where's the vertex? 4 comma negative 4. That means it moved from... You can bring it out again. We started at 0 is comma 0, and we ended up at 4 comma negative 4, so we moved right 4, down 4. So we had a horizontal movement. Horizontal translation to the right. four units. Okay? Horizontal translation right four units. And then we had a vertical translation. I will call it vertical shift. Down four units. So where are we? Where does that put us? I went over 4, down 4. I'm in quadrant 4 because this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It goes counterclockwise. Okay? So positive, comma, negative puts me in Q4. All right? So that's the... Um, and that's the top. Okay? That's the top. Um, so we're looking at a maximum, right? I already, well, I already wrote it. Maximum. Yeah? So now it's time to find the domain. The domain is all real numbers. Okay. What's the range? Well, in this case, the range is going to be negative infinity all the way up to the k value, right? Think about it like that. Negative infinity goes on. It goes down forever and ever. So the lowest point is negative infinity. Okay, and then it, I'll just write an interval notation this time. Remember, we do infinity with an open parentheses, comma, and then it ends at the k value of negative 4. That's when it hits the peak. Okay, so it goes forever, and then it comes up, boom, it can't, it can't go above negative 4. Okay, so it hits the top at negative 4 using interval notation because that negative 4 is included in the set 
we conclude that interval notation with a square bracket. You know, if that, if that notation confuses you, then you can use this notation, negative infinity, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to negative 4. Okay? So what do we, we've done it all. We found, let's check. We got the transformations, max, axis of symmetry, vertex, domain, and range. Yeah, we got it all. We're done with, we're done with number seven. Okay, uh, here we are on the last uh, problem on the first page, number eight. And thankfully, this is the last problem in standard form. Um, so we don't, you know, we put this away for a minute. So remember, the general form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? I'm like a robot, right? I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. So uh, this is negative 1. Okay, so a is negative 1, b is negative 6, c is negative 8. So let's hit that. A equals, B equals, C equals. Okay, so A is negative 1, B is negative 6, and C is negative 8. Okay? Uh, so just you know enough right you're you're our, now now you're subject matter experts you look at the parent function what happened it went from 1x squared to negative 1x squared so it 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 flipped right it reflected across the y axis and then it, it did some movement right and we'll figure that out it's got a y intercept at negative 8 which isn't really necessary for, it's not being asked, nobody's asking that in this problem, but if you had to like graph this, um, you would need to know. That's why I keep like hammering this. Like this is the y int right here, y int. If you had to, if you had to graph this without any calculator help, you would need that point because you'd have to find several points to uh, to graph. But anyway, we don't need that for this. So now um, we know that because it's 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 net it's flipped it's flipped like this, right? So we know we're dealing with this shape. We know we're gonna have a, a range of negative infinity less than or equal to y less than or equal to whatever k is, right? The top of the graph. So are we dealing with a minimum or a maximum? A maximum. I just like hitting the, the little plastic thing, right? Um, so what we write max somewhere. Put that in a box. And now we do axis of symmetry. So axis of symmetry, AOS, um, slash H value of the vertex, slash X val vert. So X value of the vertex. Okay, that's all going to be found using this little formula. Negative B over 2A. Okay, so let's 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 hit it. Negative b. That's negative open parentheses and b is negative six, so that's negative negative six over two open parentheses a negative one. Okay, so ne negative negative six. That's just six. Okay. So this equals um, 6 over 
2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2. All right, 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So this whole thing becomes negative 3. That is the x value of the vertex. That's h, and that's the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry equation, AOS EQ, okay, colon, x equals negative 3. All right, put that in a box. And then we also know h equals negative 3, okay? So we got 2 for 1 there. Good deal, all right? Now we plug that negative 3 back into the equation. Solve for y, okay? So we uh, go f of x, notation, say f of negative 3 equals negative 1, open parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, squared, minus 6, open parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, minus 8. Okay? So let's do the math, right? What does this equal? Well, remember, uh, anything squared, just like absolute value, right? The absolute value of any number is positive. The square of any number is positive. So the square of negative 3, that's negative 3 times negative 3, that's 9. But then we multiply 9 times negative 1. So we have negative 9. Okay? So that's negative 9. Then what? Then we got negative 6 times negative 3. That's negative times a negative is a positive. 6 times 3 is 18, so plus 18. So where am I at now in my stack? Right? Think of it like memory. Like What's happening? You start at negative 9. You add 18. You're at positive 9. Okay? What happens now? We're at positive 9. We subtract 8. Where are we at? We're at positive 1. Okay? So this equals 1. We better check that because, you know, what if I'm wrong? Right? What if I did that math? What if I was just all wrong? So I think y is 1. So I'm going to write this little check here. I'll do it... Um, I'll do it in some space where we don't need anything. Where do I have space? I don't have space anywhere. I'll do it down here. <laughs> you know, it's actually really good that, that you kids are making me do this on, on your paper, right? Because I now I see how you don't have any space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 1 for y equals... And then I'm going to put negative 1, open parentheses, and then I think that h is negative 3. That's the x value of the vertex. So I'm going to write 3, uh, negative 3, close parentheses, squared, okay? Um, and then minus 6, open parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, minus 8. All right, so this is my check. Like the question is, is this true? That's what a check is. This is my check. Just because I'm out, out of bounds here, I'm going to say check number eight. All right? So let's see if this is true. All right, so we, we already ran the numbers on this, right? So uh, negative three squared is nine times negative one is negative nine. And then we do negative 9 plus 18. So we're at positive 9. Then we subtract 8 from 9. And we're at positive 1. So 1 equals 1. That's what we call the identity property of equality. Right? So we know we're right. Ipe. Yay. Okay? So that means that we can, we can state that the vertex of this thing 
is located at h comma k, which is and then we put in negative three comma one. Negative three comma one. Sorry, can't see it. All right, there's your vertex. Okay, so let's put that in a box. Um, do you see how often I'm using the protractor? Like this is why I bought this for you guys. This thing is the most important tool in mathematics. It keeps you you can you keep all your lines straight, and it's just super useful. Okay, now what? We found the axis of symmetry. We found the vertex. We found it's a maximum. So now we need to do uh, transformations and then domain and range. So transformations, TR. What happened? First thing that happened is there was a flip, right? We flipped. Flip across x-axis, right? Well, that's not very academic. We better say reflected and we can say about x-axis. However you want to write it, I don't care. As long as you're telling me flip, re reflect, like you just, you just get the point across, all right? Well, then what? Well, somehow we went from a vertex at 0, 0 in the parent function to a vertex of negative 3, 1. So that means there was a shift to the left. This is the first time this has happened. Of 3 and then a shift up of 1. So what quadrant are we in? We started here, we go left three, up one. We're in quadrant two, okay? And that's gonna be the top of the curve, remember? So the, the top of the curve is somewhere up here in quadrant two, yeah? <laughs> okay, so then we have a horizontal shift to the left or horizontal translation. of three units, okay? And then what's the final thing? We've got shift up one unit. There's no compression, expansion, stretch, com squeeze, none of that, okay? Whew. All right, domain and range. Domain. All real numbers, all right? There's my lazy way of writing it. And range. Remember, this is a max. So I'm looking for negative infinity, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to k, which is one. So my range is negative infinity. I'm going to use the interval notation, comma, one, close bracket. Okay, like that. Can't see anything, sorry. That's one of the downsides of doing it this way. I can't. There's your range. But if you don't like that, if that's confusing to you, this is equivalent so if you want to write like congruent to, you use these three equal signs. And you can say that's the same thing as saying negative infinity less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. Okay? There's your domain and range. We did the translations. We did the vertex, the axis of symmetry. We called it a maximum. 
That's it. We did everything. So this is number eight completed. Good job. Okay, so here we are on number nine. Now, you could go ahead and solve this uh, using by putting it in your calculator and using the solving systems of equations. But I thought, well, let me show you the matrix method because this is really way, way easier. It's just way easier to enter because you're not having to type in the letters. So what I did is I just stripped away the letters and wrote the matrix, okay? And you know how to do that. Um, I added ones here so you wouldn't get confused about what went, what went here and here. Now, here's what you do with the calculator. Okay, so the calculator is turned off. I cleared the memory. So you turn it on. All right, and we're going to just hit calculate. So hit enter. Now we're on this blank scratch pad. So what you want to do is you want to hit um, menu, and then uh, option seven is matrix and vector. So hit seven. And now what you want to do is you want to hit five, reduced row echelon form. Okay? Now, when you do that, you have to actually insert a matrix. So you have to hit menu and seven, but then this time you're gonna create a matrix. So then hit one, and then just hit one. Okay, now you're gonna create a matrix that has three rows, and then hit tab, and that's gonna have four columns. Then hit enter, okay? And then this thing comes up, all right? Now, all you do is type in what you see here. This is super fast. So we're gonna type in negative one, space, or arrow key, one, arrow key, negative five, arrow key, negative 22, down 30, you can fill it out however you want, negative six, just fill it all out. Let's go up here, negative three, negative three, five. You time this against how you would do it the other way and tell me if this isn't faster, negative three, negative three, and now watch this, ready, enter, boom, thing is solved. So x, y, z, x is negative four, y is four, z is six. I mean, you can see that. That's how quick that was, all right? So uh, this has been going for two minutes and 27 seconds. That's how long it took to do this problem. So what we write is, um, you know, we write our answers like this, x comma y comma z. And so if you look back at the calculator, that's going to be negative 4 comma 4 comma 6. Negative 4 comma 4 comma 6. All right, and that's how you do number 9 using the matrix method where we use reduced row echelon form. And, you know, I know we haven't gotten into a lot of that, but trust me, that's the fastest way to solve these problems. Okay, so that's number nine. Okay, so here we are on number 10. Now, let's just follow the same procedure um, as before and see what happens. So remember what the structure is. We're gonna create a reduced row echelon form, and then we're gonna insert a matrix into that reduced row echelon form with three columns and, uh, sorry, with three rows and four columns, okay? So, what do we do, all right? Looking at the calculator here, we hit menu, seven, and then go down to five, and then menu, seven, one, one, delete, three rows, tab, delete, four columns, enter, okay? Now we just fill out this table, six, six, three, 18, negative one, negative six, two, 12, six, two, five, 30, enter. Now, take a look at the result, okay? Look at that result. Now, what that means is that the, um, the operations that this, this algebraic 
computer here called a calculator. It's got a computer algebra system inside of it, and it tried to solve the matrix, but it couldn't, okay? So it's giving us this weird result. We should see uh, what looks like an identity matrix, which has got a diagonal of ones, okay? And then the fourth column is, is where the answers are, just like in the previous problem. But we don't see that here. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions, okay? I just want to show you one more way. Like, what's another way? Let's say you didn't like this whole matrix way of doing it. And you just wanted to see uh, what would happen if you did it using the other method that you've learned, which is to enter the problem in as a, a system of equations. Okay? So let's do that. In that case, you would hit Menu, Algebra, which is 3, and then 2 for System of Equations. Delete what's in there for the number of equations, put 3, hit Tab, and then hit Enter. Okay, now you're going to type everything out sort of by hand, right? This is a little bit more cumbersome. That's why I like the matrix method. 6x plus 6y plus 3z equals 18. Okay, second row. Negative x minus 6y plus 2z equals 12. Then 6x plus 2y plus 5z equals 30. Okay? We zoom in. Now, this should work, right? Hit enter. And you see what you get? You get this weird result. So this weird result where you see all these C's, this is telling you there are infinitely many solutions. Okay? So that's the answer to number 10. Infinitely many solutions. Um, it's just how do you learn how do you read that in the calculator? Um, I'm going to be completely upfront with you guys. I uh, I did not, you know, know that that uh, indicated that there was infinitely many solutions. Uh, so the reason there's a massive time delay uh, in these in these problems is, you know, I spent like an hour trying to figure this out, and I finally reached out to uh, a fellow faculty member and said, what am I doing here on number 10 that's wrong? Because I keep getting these weird results. And I actually ran this through a much more powerful piece of software called Mathematica, and I got the same weird result. So um, this uh, fellow colleague, uh, who shall remain nameless, um, I just don't, I don't want to, to shout out his or her name um, on, on camera here, but they... they they let me know what the, the letters indicate. So this is going to be infinite, I guess I can't even spell, infinite. Okay, infinitely many solutions. Okay, so um, it's not no solution, it's an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so that's why we're getting these strange results. So if you get weird results in your calculator with C's, or you get, uh, and you run your, if you run it the matrix way, and you get some kind of, um, you don't get that identity matrix where it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, or 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. If you don't get that, and then a column of answers, there's something wrong. You can just assume that, it's infinitely many solutions, okay? And that is number 10. Okay, so here we are on number 11. It says, use the information to provide it to write the vertex form of the equation uh, for of each parabola, all right? So this is actually a question. Um, does this open up or down, right? So on each of these, this part is actually a question. So we're just going to identify 
um, on 11, 12, and 13 that this, this part is something we're going to answer sort of later on. Okay, so let's see what we're given. We're given a vertex here in quadrant four, and it's passing through this point. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, here's how we work on these problems. The first thing I recommend to do is to write the general form of the vertex form. So the general form will be y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h squared plus k, okay? So we're going to write that form. y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses, squared plus k, okay? Now we actually have some of this information. Right, um, we have h and k, for example. We have h here and k here. So h is 4, k is negative 10. So we can plug those in. But we also have an x and a y. They give us a point. All right. So let's worry about that in just a second. I want to I want to explain what that's for in just a second. But let's just plug in what's given and act like that's not there for just one second. So now we're going to write y equals a, open parentheses, x minus 4, close parentheses, squared, and then not plus k, but minus 10, right? Because k can be negative. So minus 10. Okay, so the problem remains is that we don't know what a is, all right? But we still have, we have three unknown variables. Not good. No bueno, right? So actually, the, the you have to have another point. And so we can get that point from right here. If we were provided a graph, um, or if we were provided like the y-intercept or something, we would have that point. So we, we're given this point. So what we need to do now is substitute in for x1 and for y17 and just solve it as an algebra problem for a. All right, so we're trying to find a. And once we find a, we can create the vertex form of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to plug in Every time I see an X, I'm going to put a 1. Every time I see a Y, I'm going to put a 17. Every time I see an H, I'm going to put a 4. Every time I see a K, I'm going to put a negative 10. Okay? So this is going to be 17 equals A, which is the thing I want. All right? I want A. And open parentheses. And now don't write X. Write 1 minus 4, close parentheses, squared, minus 10. Okay, so now you just have one variable, and you can solve this. Okay, so do parentheses first, and then the exponent. So what's 1 minus 4? It's negative 3. What's negative 3 squared? Well, anything squared is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Okay, so let's write our new line here. 17 equals a open parentheses, 9, close parentheses, minus 10. Well, now what we'll do is we'll add 10 to both sides. Okay, that cancels out, and we get 27 equals, and now I'm going to just call this 9a. And so to solve for a, I just unmultiply 9a, which is to say divide both sides by 9. These cancel out, and 27 divided by 9 is 3, right? So A is 3. A equals 3. Well, now I have everything I need. I've got A equals 3, H equals 4, and K equals negative 10. That's all I need to form a valid vertex form equation for a quadratic uh, a parabola. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So here's that vertex form. 
once again, it just can't be uh, overstated. It's y equals a open parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus k. So let's write the problem down using the information we now have. We know that a is 3, h is 4, k is negative 10. So this is very simple. We just write down y equals 3, open parentheses, x minus 4, close parentheses, squared, minus 10. We've done it, okay? So we've written it in vertex form. Now we haven't answered the question, does it open up or down? Well, you know how to answer that. Now just analyze it like the first several problems we did. Is this a positive number? Yes. So therefore, it opens up. So we would write something like since, and I'm using this symbol. This symbol right here means since or because, okay? So since a equals a number greater than zero, right? It's a positive number. Um, this parabola opens up. Okay, meaning it looks what it's going to look something like this. Okay, so there's that second part, right? If you want to put that in a box, it's great. So there's the second part of that problem. All right, now let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And that is number 11. Okay, here we are in number 12. So we've got a vertex at 5, comma, negative 1. So that's h and k, and it's passing through 6 and negative 3. Okay, so remember, start with your general form of the, the general vertex form of a quadratic equation is y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses, squared, plus k. All right? Now, plug in what you're given. Um, and we can just jump through a hoop there. We know this is x and this is y. So we know we're going to be solving for the a missing variable there. So we're going to plug in negative 3 for y. Okay, and that's going to equal our unknown, which is a, open parentheses, and now uh, we're going to put 6 for x minus h, which we said was 5. Okay, close those parentheses off, squared, and then what's k? Negative 1. So we put minus 1. All right, and now this is really just a matter of solving this little, this little math problem for a. All right, so this one's really simple because 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Okay, so what we have is we have negative 3 equals a minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. Okay, this cancels. You have a equals negative 2. So now you have A, H, and K. You can go ahead and just jump right to that vertex form. That vertex form is going to be Y equals A, open parentheses, X minus H, close parentheses, squared, plus K. And we already know all these uh, variables, so we write Y equals A, which is negative 2, open parentheses, X, and then minus 5, close parentheses, squared, and then k is negative 1, so we put minus 1. So that's the vertex form of the quadratic. Okay? Now, does this open up or down? 
Well, the question is only asking you, is there a negative symbol in front of the A value? Yes, therefore it opens down. So we can say, since A is less than zero, this opens down. Okay? This is a less than symbol. Okay? So this opens down, and that means it's going to look like this. Okay? And that's, I mean, that's really it. So just want to put this in uh, some kind of, like, box. So you want to make sure your teacher knows that you did it and you know where the answer is. Okay? Let me zoom out real quick so you can see the whole thing. And that right there is number 12. Okay, here we are, number 13. This is the last problem in this section, and there's only two more problems. Okay, so a question is, does it open up or down? We're given vertex. So we have H, and we have K, and we have X, and we have Y. We know that the general form of the vertex form is Y equals A, open parentheses, X minus X h close parentheses squared plus k okay so now let's just plug in everything we have so we'll plug in 11 for y equals a which we don't know open parentheses 5 for x minus 2 for h close parentheses squared plus 8 for k Okay, and so now we're just solving this problem for a. So 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So I have 11 equals 9a plus 8. Subtract 8 from both sides. Okay, that cancels out. And this is 3. So we have 3 equals 9a. Divide both sides by 9. And this reduces down to 1 over 3. So a equals 1 third. Okay? Now we have a, h, and k. We can write the form. So remember, it's y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h squared plus k. We have all the information we need, so we're going to write y equals one-third okay, open parentheses x minus, and then we have two for h, close parentheses squared, and then k is eight, so plus Eight. And that's the right there, that's the vertex form of the quadratic. So you can put that in a box. There's your vertex form. Now the only question is does this open up or down? Is it a positive number? Okay, is A positive? Then it opens up. The only difference is it's, it's going to be fatter, right? It's, it's going to have that horizontal stretch because I was I told you before, if you have a fractional um, A value, what you're what you're saying is that there's going to be a a stretch okay I know they call it compression or something i call it a horizontal stretch because it's just fatter wider okay broader than the parent function you know uh, parent function here this one would be like wider okay it'd be open wider because of the fraction all right so we're going to say since a is greater than zero, um, this opens up. Okay, so what we're looking at is something like this. And I'm, I'm sort of trying to draw it in the sense that it would be like fatter than your normal, you know, stretched more than your normal one. So go ahead and put that in a box. And you are done with number 13, but I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. 
Okay, so there's number 13. Good job. Okay, so we're down to the final um, four problems. Okay, so what we're, it says, given the transformations, write the equation in vertex form. Vertically reflects over the x-axis, vertical compression by three-fourths, right three, down four. Okay, really, really simple. All you have to do is remember the general form. Y equals A, open parentheses, X minus H, close parentheses, squared, plus K. All right? So uh, that, that vertical compression by three-fourths, that's your A value. Okay? Simple. Just put that in for your A value. Right three. Okay? So right three means that um, our H value is three. Okay? Down four means our K value is negative four. So if you want to write this, you just write Y... Oh, wait, it says it reflects over the x-axis. Hmm. Almost missed this one. Reflects over the x-axis. So um, our a value is 3 fourths, but we're going to put a negative sign in front of it. Okay? So y equals negative 3 fourths. Open parentheses x minus 3, close parentheses squared, minus 4. So right there, there's your vertex form. It's not that, don't, don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Okay, done with that, and done with number 14. Okay, here we are in number 15. Vertical stretch by a factor of 2 left, 5, up 3. This is going to present a challenge for us um, because we haven't actually seen one of these. So remember the general form, y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses, squared, plus k. Okay? So, what do we know? Alright? We know that a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 is a positive number, right? It's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. It doesn't say anything about reflecting. So A is 2, okay? And now left 5, here's what that means. Left 5 means that H is actually equal to negative 5. So we want to be super careful when we start messing with this formula here because you're going to get into a double negative situation, okay? So now it says up 3. Well, that one's pretty simple. K equals plus 3, right? That one won't be hard. So let's get into what to do in, in this situation here um, where we've got a negative h value, right? Because for it to go left, it has to be, we have to have a plus symbol right here instead of a minus symbol. And I'm going to show you why that happens. So y equals uh, vertical stretch by a factor of 2, so a is 2, open parentheses, now watch this, so this is x minus, now just put x minus and don't even think, okay, now in parentheses, in parentheses, write what you think h is, h is negative 5, okay, close those parentheses off, and then close off the bigger parentheses, squared, and then k is plus 3, okay? So look what you got in here. You've got minus, minus. Well, that's going to become a plus. And that's how those pluses appear in these vertex forms. And that always freaks students out because they don't understand, you know, where did that come from? So x plus 5, close parentheses, squared, plus 3 is going to be the final vertex form there. Here it is, here it is, and there it is. Okay? So, now, we are done with number 15. Okay, here we are on number 16, the penultimate problem. Penultimate meaning before the ultimate. 
uh, or the next to last problem. Vertically reflects over the x-axis. Okay, so it's a flip, right? So this is going to be a negative symbol. This is going to open down. All right, it's going to have a maximum. Um, vertical stretch by a factor of four. So it's going to be pulled by four. So it's going to, A is going to be negative four. That's what I'm getting at. Left two, down one. So it's going to be X plus two, close parentheses, squared, minus three. Right? But we'll get there. So I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. I don't want to just run, run, steamroll this. So let's write this standard form. Y equals A, open parentheses, X minus H, close parentheses, squared, plus K. Every time. Write it. So let's identify what we know. H is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay. K is going to be equal to negative 3. A, because of that uh, vertical reflection and vertical stretch, is going to be equal to negative 4. All right. So we just plug all these numbers in. So y equals negative 4, open parentheses, x minus negative 2, close parentheses, squared, minus 3. Okay, so you see the double negative right there? That's going to become a plus sign. So y equals negative 4, open parentheses, x plus 2, close parentheses, squared, minus 3. That's your final answer, right? So this opens down. It's really squeezed, pulled, whatever you want to call it. Very steep. Um, it's shifted left two spaces and down two spaces. So from parent function, we go left two, down two. 3, and we're in quadrant 1, 2, 3. We're in quadrant 3, right? Negative x, negative y. Okay, so that's number 16. Okay, here we are on the final problem, number 17. Uh, vertical compression by a factor of 1 third. Right 6, up 7. Well, right 6 makes us at ease, right? Because that means that we don't have to mess with the double negatives. Vertical compression by a factor of one-third just means A is one-third. It means that it's, it's wider. Like I call what they're saying vertical compression by a factor of one-third, I call that a horizontal stretch. They're calling it vertical compression. You know, that vertical compression, I mean, I've a, when I went to school, they called it vertical compression. In my head, I never understood what, is, what does it mean vertical compression. What I understand is stretching, like making it fatter. That makes more sense to me. So in any, way, any case, let's write down what we know. We know that A equals one-third, okay? H equals, because it says right six, it's just H equals six. We don't have to mess with that. And then up seven means that K is positive, so K equals seven, okay? Now, write the general form, y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses squared, plus k. Now, plug everything in. y equals 1 over 3, open parentheses, x minus 6, close parentheses squared, plus 7. Okay, so what does this look like? This opens up, but it's fat. Okay, it's fat. And from the parent function, okay, from this parent function, what has happened? It went right 6, up 7. So we're in Q1, quadrant 1. And that's where the bottom of this function is. So just to sign off here, I want to tell you something. This function right here has no real solutions. 
Um, and when we get a little bit further along, we'll find out that if you have a, a, a quadratic equation whose vertex lies in quadrant one or in quadrant two, if the base, and it opens up, okay, if it opens up and the vertex is in Q1 or Q2, there are no real solutions. There are complex solutions. Um, but we haven't started solving them, okay? So I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just letting you know we're going to get into something called imaginary numbers, and this is the kind of problem that's going to that's going to give us those solutions. So anyway, guys, let's do what we do at the end of all these videos, and that is look at all the hard work we've done, okay? I can't even zoom out enough to actually show you all this. Let's see. Mess with this thing. To show you the whole piece of paper. Okay. I still can't get it to work. Um, so there's the back page. And then the front page. Okay. Wow. That was a lot of work. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found anything in this video useful, if this helped you in any way at all, please do me a favor. See the little thumbs up button? Go ahead and give that a give that a punch. You know, give that give that, give that bang. Hit that hit that punch. Hit that hit that like button. And then if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, you gotta ask yourself, what am I doing with my life? Okay. You wanna subscribe to the channel, right? I mean, because this is good stuff, right? This is this is helping you out. Um, please consider becoming a member. Membership is free, okay? Um, uh, but you get all kinds of cool benefits if you become a member of my channel. Membership is different than subscription. So be, please become a member. Become part of the Athenian Stranger family, all right? Membership is free for students, and you get all kinds of prizes um, and special videos and all that good stuff. So uh, please like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell so you're alerted to new videos, share with your friends, Blah, blah, blah. End of video nonsense. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.